before we get into this episode of questions from subs we got to give a special shout out to the newest team keep it clean patron amanda we appreciate you thank you very 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 much now first question actually came from another patron jl he said super bowl run the ravens wide receiver one was the chiefs wide receiver four last year so i guess it's one of them things where one team's trash ends up being the ravens treasure because Demarcus Robinson, and, and this was something that I can't say it wasn't supposed to happen, but based off of, I mean, before the preseason, the rosters and stuff, I mean, it wasn't supposed to happen. Um, and now, like, I hate to do this, but we're, no, I don't, I don't hate to do this. What if, and I know we can't do it, but what if the Raiders would have never cut Demarcus Robinson? What would the Ravens have done? We'll never know, but Demarcus Robinson has, he's been a solid signing for the Baltimore Ravens. Been a solid signing, um, definitely improved their wide receiver room. Um, and, I mean, it's just because somebody was wide receiver four for a previous team um, doesn't mean they were bad. But, I mean, he's, he's, he's Ravens wide receiver one now. I mean, it's, it is what it is, man. But um, it's like it, it just that just gives you a reminder of the diff, different teams, their different priorities, uh, and whatnot. So maybe one of our RB ones, because we got like two, three of them. Uh, maybe one of RB one. Oh uh, well, excuse me. No, our RB four, our, our like third or fourth running back could be a starter over in Kansas City. Next question came from another patron, Biz, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, how about Maryland's coach at coordinator if we move on from Roman? Does he have any previous ties to the Ravens? If not, then I don't think he would become a Raven. But anyway, no, I, um, what would they do at offensive? Because I, I, I said it before. I, I actually thought last year was going to be Greg Roman's last year, but I didn't realize that he had another year left on his deal. So I, I definitely think this year, Will be his last year. Um, mm. An offensive coordinator. Cause yeah, I, I don't see them keeping him beyond this year. Uh, if if that head coach at Maryland, whoever the head coach is, um, if he knew Harbaugh or DeCosta or somebody from the Ravens, uh, then I could see that. If he was like close with him or like almost family with him, then I could see that. Or if he had worked with the Ravens before. Um, but if not, I can see a possible. I don't think it's gonna be James Urban either. I think, um, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be James Urban. That would be a possibility though, but I don't think it's gonna be him. Uh, I think they may promote from within, cause I think T. Martin. I think he would be a candidate, um, and maybe maybe they promised him last. I, I don't know. I ain't hear nothing. I'm just saying, maybe they promised him last year, like when he had an interview for the Bills offensive coordinator position. Maybe the Ravens are like, hey, look. T, just, just hold it down for this year, and then next year, Greg wrote his contract expiring. We'll do one of them little mutual type things. You know how we do it over here. And then the, the job is all yours. If you can show that you got you got these wide receivers right. You you, you prove to us, and, and we'll prove to you that we got your back. Um, but I don't know. I just, I don't know what they'll do at OC. But, again, my, my thing is, continue, and it will continue to be, they have the same philosophy, the offensive coordinators is it'll matter, but it's it'll be a lot of the same stuff. Cause it starts from the top. They tell them, "Hey, we are the Ravens. This is what we do. This is how we do it. We a run first team, and the offense goes from the inside out. It starts with the offensive line, the running backs, the run game. That's first and foremost." Um, and then the tight ends, they heavily involved. And then re receivers, yeah, we'll, we'll keep some just to say that we got some, but we, we, we ain't really worried about them. Next question came from my guy, Dominic, and, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, what's up, Engraver? Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. I just got finished watching the rerun of the game, and it made me think of some things. So three weeks ago when we played the Saints, I remember after the game, Lamar kept saying, I missed um, Demarcus Robinson a couple of times, and he kept saying that, and then boom, he has a big game this week. Is that a coincidence or what? No, because he ain't miss him. He ain't miss him, so nah, ain't no coincidence. Uh, he said, and secondly, I think it was the first press conference we had since the buy or before, but I remember a reporter asking Humphrey, would you rather play the slot or outside? And he said the slot because he can do more and be free. Oh, that was just like, that was like, was that earlier this week? Or was that late? I think that was earlier this week. 
Bef- the the it was a press conference before the Panthers game where he talked about. Uh, he said he likes playing both, but he said when he plays the slot, he gets to be more physical. He said he could line up like a linebacker, and, and, and the linebacker stands like Patrick Queen or Roquan Smith. Uh, but he said he can do more, and he said he thinks less. Um, and anyway, he said, now looking back at this Panthers game, I noticed that he was in the slot way more, and he looked great. But is that a coincidence also? I mean, they uh, they had an injury to Kyle Hamilton. He'd be in the slot sometimes. Um, so, no. I mean, whenever – with the slot, Marlon Humphrey, he doesn't play there so much over the years. Uh, it's like he's like he's he's both an outside and inside corner. He's a sort of do it all type of guy, um, and it it works for him. It works for him. Um, but he's he's physical enough to to press those big wide receivers. But then when you take that physicality, you put it on the inside, that can sort of give you an advantage if you could get your hands on them smaller slot wide receivers. If you miss, then that'd be a wrap. But anyway. He said, I also think if they want you here in Baltimore, they will grant uh, what you wish. Just a side note. Yeah, I mean, that's what really anything. Um, but certainly with the Ravens, if, if they really love you, then they'll make sure they, they take care of stuff and make it happen. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So, Tim, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer in the video just like this. Next question came from my guy, G-Task. Oh, it's been a little minute since i uh, seen you sending the question. It's been a little minute. But anyway, he said, Angry when it's been a while. Oh, well, yep, he said the same thing. Okay. <laughs> and when I say a while, it's been a long time since I wrote to you. With being a Ravens fan and being overseas, it's kind of harder to keep up with the games and stay engaged more, but I try. And your content helps a lot with keeping up with the Ravens news. Hey, appreciate that. I didn't know you was overseas. He said, my question to you is, should we get rid of James Prochet? Yes, his hands are one of the safest we have on our team, but his lackluster use in games and drawing unnecessary flags after plays are whistled dead are slowing us down when he's on the field. And judging us right after the Panthers uh, win, he hasn't been the best. And I can see why Hobbs keeps him back. He used to be the main punt returner for the team, but that job was handed to Duve this season. Well, last season. Uh, he said, is this the end? Let me know your thoughts on a possible trade option. Keep or cut altogether. Much love to you and your family. Just like Ryan Stanley will most likely be for the season. I'm out. Why you had to do that? Why you had to do that? Um, Proche, uh, man, it's, it's been tough with Proche. I, I feel for him because, yeah, best hands on the team. Um, that's that's why when he dropped that pass uh, against the Panthers, I said, "Uh oh, this this is scary." Um, but I mean, I I was I would say let, I would say let him go, man. I would say don't don't hold him hostage. Um, you're not committed to him. You you you're not invested in him. I I would say let him go. If, whether trade, cut, and and I think that he would actually be happy. Not happy to to like necessarily like lose his job, but um, if he can get an opportunity elsewhere. Somewhere else that's that's actually gonna use him. Let him do his thing, man. Um, so I, yeah, that's what I would do. Next question came from my guy Kevin. He said, "Hey, Graven, when Gus comes back, why not use Ken Drake like the Cowboys use Tony Pollard? I still think they should use Drake as a receiver as well." Oh yeah, I know that Cowboys game when Tony Pollard was catching all them long passes and stuff. Well, it was a lot of yak. It was really a lot of yak. Um, but it worked, and it was a beautiful thing to see. He did look like a receiver out there, and, and Drake Drake got hands. Well, I mean, he he did have a drop <laughs> against the Panthers, but he got hands though. He 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 usually catches all of those. So um, yeah, you, and again, you, you could you could use him as a receiver. You could put him out there. You could have him run some different routes. It's like simple stuff. He ain't got to be running no routes like a wide receiver, but just simple stuff like wheel routes and stuff like that. Uh, maybe little drags and whatever. Just simple stuff. Nothing too complex. Anything like that. Um, but it could certainly work because it would be having another weapon on the field and just using him in multiple ways to make it harder for the defense. The last question on this episode came from my guy, Jonathan. He said, Engraven, I hope all is well. And man, you and the family are especially well after the win. My question for you is, knowing that it is highly possible for this to be Lamar Jackson's last season with the Ravens, where do you see the Ravens trading him to? And do you think they stick with Tyler Huntley at quarterback or find someone else to be the starting quarterback in the draft or free agency? Just wanted to hear your thoughts and go Ravens. Oh, what a way to end us off uh, with this strong possibility right here. Um, 
Well, Lamar Jackson, as far as uh, where he could be traded to, um, I think the Bucks, the Bucks will be an option. Um, Tua, Tua, trying to make sure that <laughs> Lamar don't get traded to no Miami. Um, but yeah, I think the Bucks, I think the the Falcons, they option. Um, the Panthers, uh, they they will be an option too. Um, hmm. New Orleans, cause New Orleans, they they don't they don't have their quarterback situation at all. Um, but see, with New Orleans, like they they of course they 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 got their cap drama every year. But they find a I, I bet New Orleans, like even with all the the drama they got with the cap, they will find a way to pay Lamar all that money, man. Uh, so those will be some of the teams that I think he could get traded to. Now, as far as the Ravens, if this does happen, hopefully it doesn't. But if it does happen, um. You asked about them possibly sticking with Tyler Huntley or going to the draft, a free agency. I think they would do a little bit of both. Uh, Tyler Huntley, and, well, is Tyler Huntley a restricted free agent this year? Well, after this season, I think he might be restricted. If he's restricted, then I could see them tendering Tyler Huntley to keep him around for another year. And I could see them also drafting a quarterback um, early on with one of the millions of picks that they will get from trading Lamar. Like I said, ho hopefully none of that happens. But I, 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 I just I don't see them re-signing Lamar, man. I just I, I, I still don't see it. I still don't see it. Um, and it's like it's like they've been given like subtle hints, like throughout the the year and stuff, and different through different avenues and whatnot. And I I just, ooh, uh, we'll see how it goes though. Now this question, this is the last one. On this episode because I was working I was editing the video for this episode and then I got an email from my guy Joshua and he said the Ravens are who they are because of economy not philosophy oh okay because like straight up, my, my guy Josh be bringing it so I, I, I love when he sends in the question because he always like he come with it anyway he said engraving you the man Joshua no I'm not uh, he said the Ravens have emotionally blackmailed the good people of Baltimore and the third uh, of Florida into believing in the run game, calling it culture. But it's all about the money. We keep buying into this whole Ravens philosophy for being a tough run first offense with stout defense. But the truth is that high flying offenses are expensive. Superstar QBs, wide receivers and prime linemen ain't cheap to develop and keep. Look at how they purposely devalue Duvernay, as you explained earlier. I think more people catching on to that one, man. Uh, the Titans do the same cheap thing. They got rid of A.J. Brown quick. Uh, so can we all accept the fact that Bashadi and EDC will never upgrade the offense with a superstar receiver? Not until Bashadi sells a team. Maybe I'm tripping, but let's all pray for J.K. and Gus to return for playoffs and run 250 yards a game so we have a chance for the Super Bowl and a chance to keep Lamar Jackson. I mean, well, that's that's also part of it, too, um, because of what they choose to invest in and what they choose not to invest in either. I mean, you see um, you see how they move. We know how they move, um, how they operate and whatnot. Uh, they want the they want the most bang for their buck. I mean, you could really say that about anybody, but for the positions that they'll pay. Uh, and they'll keep and they'll retain and they'll invest in um, in the way that they go about investing in those positions. Uh, it's just different. Obviously, receiver, they that's not a position that they really care about. Receivers are very expensive. Um, Ravens ain't been on no expensive receiver training in, in ever. Um, offensive linemen, they do care about those. Uh, like, they, they paid Ronnie Stanley. Um, they did a first rounder in Tyler Linderbaum. Um... They also drafted Fale. They, 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 Morgan Moses was, he wasn't expensive, but they got Morgan Moses. They re-signed Pat McCary. Um, so at, at off, they had signed Kevin Zeitler. Uh, that was a little significant deal right there. And, and it's been worth it for sure. Um, but yeah, so the offensive line, they care about that. Obviously care about running back because they, if you're a running back, man, Ravens, Ravens, they got what, five running backs on the team right now? I know Gus is hurt a little bit and uh, JK, he's on IR. Ravens got like they they got like five running backs on the team. Five. Uh tight end, obviously. They did pay Mark Andrews. Um, but tight ends, they don't they get paid, but they don't get paid like receivers like that, as we all know. Um and then of course we, we talked about receiver already and Lamar. 
Lamar is a big hold up with Lamar um, on if will more so win, but not not even just win. He'll get his money, but who it will come from. Um, but yeah, like you mentioned, those high powered offenses, they they gonna cost some bread, man. They gonna cost some bread because high powered offense usually have uh, obviously the quarterback, so they, they cost a lot of money. Um, the receivers, uh, tight ends, offensive line, like you, you gotta pay to play with the big boys. So um, yeah, they they just that's not what they do. But now defense now, oh <laughs> defense now, hey hey. All right, now, because, again, Marcus Williams, they did the first round on Kyle Hamilton. Um, Marlon Humphrey, obviously, they they traded for Roquan Smith, and you know he ain't going nowhere. Uh, they re-signed Michael Pierce, Calais Campbell. He 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 had a little fat chunk of the salary cap. Not too much, though, because uh, his deal had expired last year. Then they re-signed him this year. Um, who else am I thinking of? I'm thinking of somebody. Uh, obviously, Marcus Peters. You know, I think they're gonna move on from him at the end of this year. Um, like they on defense, like they they will go in, man. They they will go in. Um, but it's just so yeah, it it it, it, it is still philosophy. But their philosophy is um, part of their philosophy. Part of what they do as far as with the run game, uh, it does um, allow them. Well, not even allow, but it does have them. Uh, pay cheaper price and they hope that with a cheaper price for offense and hope that it can just go off like crazy and they be like hey you see how we spent our money wisely yeah this feels like a dream and you know just what i mean you see my boy he like gotta made it how to made it boy he's a fan and he like the ravens like the ravens and you know just what i mean Shout out to Graven.